Hi y'all, welcome to Petite Uyra Crafts episode 44. I have been so bad at recording this podcast, but that also means that I have a ton to show you guys. I have a ton of stash from traveling and such. I have a ton of finished objects, as well as a bunch of quilting, plus the winner of this lovely skein of yarn. So let's go ahead and get started. First up is stash. I have been traveling a little bit and there was a fiber festival last weekend so I got quite a few purchases to show you guys. So first up I traveled to the east coast a few weeks ago and I stopped in Baltimore and there was one yarn shop there that I wanted to check out. Um, they carried Kim Dye's yarn and I wanted to see some of her other colorways in person. So I stopped by Lovely Yarns. It Anyway, the shop was super adorable. Uh, the owner was there while I visited and she was incredibly nice and sweet and welcoming. I don't always find that um, walking into yarn shops to be incredibly warm. I don't really know if it's like me being kind of awkward or if there's like other things going on. Anyway, I really enjoyed the store. Uh, she kind of showed me around the entire place and pointed out all of the local dyed or locally milled yarns there. And I ended up picking up some Surrey um, alpaca, which kind of has a mohair loft to it. Um, I got two skeins, they were 25 grams a piece, so about 50 grams, uh, uh, 50 grams total to be about 500 yards. I hadn't tried a Surrey yarn like this before, so I thought it was interesting and it was also local. Um, but yeah, it's super gorgeous. It's pretty similar to the other mohair that I got now that I look at it But apparently I like this color. So <laughs> oh um, And this is from the alpaca yarn company next up. I did look at the Kim Dye's yarn Colorways that she had there. This is the skein that I ended up selecting I had this other skein that I bought previously from her and I was picturing this one when I picked this one so that they could go together and I think they do pretty well. Uh, it has the kind of rust colored in here as well and a little bit of the kind of minty blue robin's egg blue color is also in this skein. Um, yeah so I got them to match each other. They're pretty stinking adorable. Next up I stopped by Cambridge for work as well and I went to gather here which I've talked about before. I'm so into the aesthetics of the shop. Um, they have wonderful yarn selection and they're sewing embroidery as well as yarn, which is like pretty much all of my favorite things wrapped up into one. And I ended up picking up a bra sewing kit. Um, so this should be fun. This is more of a, I guess a bralette. There's no padding involved, but I have never sewn uh, elastic or pretty much really anything in this kind of category so this should be a fun challenge. The colorway that I selected is this lovely coral color which is very much my jam but yeah this should be fun. I decided on getting this kit because I have like entertained the idea of sewing bralettes myself before but it was really daunting to try to find all the bits and pieces and like clasps and everything to go with it that also coordinates. So um, I saw this kit and I was like, oh, that's an amazing, amazing uh, thing just because they're all together already. Uh, in addition to that, I also picked up a skein of skinny dipping yarns in the colorway Malaria Dreams. I don't know why I've been gravitating to these like really super fall warm colors lately. I don't generally wear them that often, but I thought this game was super gorgeous. So yeah, this one is a single yarn, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I just thought that the color just really stood out to me, so this is the one that I picked. Alrighty, moving on. Um, I also went up to San Francisco to visit my friends up there and I finally managed to get over to Black Squirrel in Berkeley. The shop is so pretty. It's super um, open and there's a lot of sun that kind of comes in through the windows on two different sides and they have the most amazing indie dyed yarn wall. It is like two 
sets of five by five IKEA shelf things, but like each of those are split into quadrants. And then within that, they display their yarn in kind of a color of ombre gradient across the entire shelving unit. And it's amazing. And I had a very hard time selecting just a few items. Um, so the ones that I really were, uh, were looking out for was some Earl Grey Fiber Co. She's a new dyer. I saw her on Instagram. I wanted to check out some of her work. And then also, and they also had Knox Yarn, which I had heard a lot about, but actually didn't own either. So the two that I picked up was this lovely skein from Earl Grey Fiber Company. And the base is the Chamomile Sock. And that is a gold Stellina Superwash Merino Nylon base. And you know me and my Stellina. I was a complete sucker for the skein and it's totally my colors. Yeah, and the colorway is called Bloom and it's just super pretty. Ah, pinks, yellows, yeah, my jam, my jam and gold Stellina. So that was the skein that I picked up there. And then I also picked up this skein of Knox yarn and the base is her Diana sock base and the colorway is called Banana Stand, um, which you can tell once again, there's yellow and pink. I have a problem, but it was super cute. And I also found another skein of Regia Perfect, which I hadn't seen this colorway before. So it's kind of like a purpley self-striping, self-patterning yarn and yeah. That was it for Black Squirrel. Oh, that shop is so beautiful. If you guys get the chance to kind of go visit it, I definitely think you should. If you like indie dyed yarns. Um, they also have some fabric uh, notions and stuff like that as well. My local yarn store, Wild Fiber Studios, also posted a unboxing of a new shipment of yarns on their Instagram. And it was Lollipop Yarns. And... I also haven't tried lollipop yarns, but I heard very good things about it. Um, so I very quickly stopped by the shop and bought some yarn for myself as well as my knitting group. The one that I selected was this super cute uh, black, pink, purple. And you see here, this one's a speckly stripe. And this colorway is called Buried Alive, like berry, like the fruit berry. So yeah, super cute. I'm excited. It's in a gobstopper ball, which is also super fun. And yeah, more sock yarn because that's what I need in my life right now. As I mentioned, there was also a weaving and fiber festival this weekend. Um, I did pick up some combed yarn um, for weaving as well as uh, some kind of rope stuff for some macrame, but I'll hold off on showing that to you guys until I actually do something with it. But I also got to see my favorite fiber dyer, Be Mice Elf. She is local-ish to me here. I've spun a lot of her fiber, um, but she doesn't always update super often. So it was great to actually see her in person. And I picked up the most gorgeous gradient fiber set. Ta-da! So this is her BFL base and it is a five ounce gradient pack. So there's five little bumps of color and it's, oh, it's so beautiful. And her fiber is super reasonably priced. So another reason why I love her. And yeah, this one is called Gray Heather, which I had eyed this colorway online before. I just wasn't sure if I needed more fiber and I don't because I haven't been spinning, but look how pretty this is. Couldn't pass it up. Plus, it was great seeing Laura's skin. And in addition to that, she also had some skeins of yarn dyed. Uh, she doesn't normally have yarn, and I had I was also eyeing a braid of fiber in this similar colorway. And I was trying to be more practical about my fiber stash and said that it's quicker to work with a skein of yarn than to work with the bump of fiber to spin into the skein of yarn. So. I justified buying this gorgeous one. This is called Patina, and it is, and it's on a 75% uh, merino, 25% nylon base. So yeah, pretty basic sock base, but look at this. It, isn't this one gorgeous too? Oh, oh, this might actually go well with this skein of yarn. What do you think, guys? Uh, they're on different bases, but these two might be fun together. And honestly, it probably wouldn't look too bad with this set either. So yeah, I have options, I think. I think these all kind of go together. I like to tell myself I like to have options for when I want to start projects immediately, but 
I think my color choices are pretty good. But yeah, that's it for my stash. I did a lot of yarn shopping over the last month and a half. The next stop is finished objects, and I have a lot of finished objects to show you guys. So first up is my pair of opal socks. These were the socks that went missing for quite a while when I moved. I didn't know where I had put it. But then I uh, found it again. It was stuck under a box that I hadn't unpacked. Um, but I finished my pair of socks. This is the opal sock yarn in the colorway Tomorrow's World. And it's a self-patterning sock yarn. And this is just a basic vanilla sock that I generally do with a heel flap and double gusset bottom. And yeah, top down on size zeros. That was another pair of socks for my drawer. And then I also cast on and finished a sock head hat. Um, I kind of messed up because I didn't really look at the pattern. And I did a one by one rib instead of the two by two rib that's written in the pattern. And also I shortened the ribbing part. I think in the pattern it recommends you do double the width that I have so that you can fold it up on itself for extra warmth, but you don't really need that in LA. So I just did it um, with a four-ish inch ribbing and then a slouchy top. But yeah, this is in the Salty Tails colorway from Hedgehog Fibers, and this was some leftover from my Find Your Fade. So yeah, yay for more hats, because I had given most of mine away. Sock head hats are my alternative to knitting socks. It's pretty straightforward and mind listening. So moving on, I also finished my True Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli for her fall knit along. And this was a knit out of some hand dyed uh, yarn that me and some friends dyed earlier this year. It, so it has no colorway, but it is a merino cashmere nylon base in DK. And it's super squishy. It is already starting to pill a little bit, but that's because it has that cashmere in it. And it fits wonderfully. As you guys know, I had a little bit of a setback with my stasis pullover recently. I was a little bit upset finishing a sweater that totally didn't fit me, but my friend loves it, so it's fine. Uh, but this one fits me beautifully. Look at that shoulder seam. I love this sweater. This is my new kind of like lounging around the house sweater or walking the dog. It's super squishy because of the ribbing on the front here. Yeah, it fits me wonderfully. I am super happy with this sweater. I've been wearing it around a ton. It's a great pattern. It was a little bit confusing at the beginning on how to like actually start the top part of the sweater, but it came together amazingly. Um, I looked at some pictures of other people's works in progress to figure out what the heck was going on. If you follow the pattern as written, it works out completely fine. It was just my brain. I couldn't quite wrap my head around how things were coming together. Um, but yeah, I love this sweater. It's a great finished object. Next up is my colorwork sweater uh, round two. Since the stasis pullover did not fit me, I wanted a colorwork sweater really bad. Like, like I definitely really wanted a colorwork sweater. So I decided on picking a different pattern that was top down so I can try it on. And um, I went with the Branches and Buds pullover. And oh my goodness, you guys, I love this thing. So I actually finished the sweater. Um, so here is the top. It is knit out of Imperial Yarns Tracy 2 and the natural colorway and the purplish plum color here is called Marionberry, I believe. But yeah, so this pullover, um, I knit I had enough yarn to knit it as a sweater dress, so I did. So here's the top, and I I went ahead and finished the waist decreases and hip increases and then knit straight for another like 10 inches or so. I did the bottom as written until I pretty much kind of ran out of yarn. But yes, I love this sweater. It fits me beautifully. Look at this little underarm business. No weird gappy sweater side boob thing going on. It fits me beautifully. I love it so much. I don't think it'll fit on screen so I won't stand up, but it hits me about two, two and a half inches above my kneecap. So that's a perfect length for my body. Anything longer and I kind of just look super short and dumpy. So yeah, I love the sweater and I'm so happy to have a colorwork sweater that actually fits. Look at this. 
I'm super, super excited if you couldn't tell. I don't think I'll add the little buds. I don't have a ton of like scrappy yarns in this weight and I don't think it really needs it. I kind of like it the way it is right now. As I was working on that sweater, I got super excited for colorwork sweaters in general. And after getting through the colorwork yoke on that and how much I enjoyed the fact that it was a top-down colorwork sweater, I swatched for another one. You guys have probably seen this sweater on, um, I think it's on Knit Picks as well as Ravelry. It's called the Flea Cardigan on, um, on Ravelry. Here is my swatch. So I actually started from this end here and kind of worked through the color work chart, but I didn't really love this shenanigans right here. So I ended up going ahead and knitting the a little bit of the main body of the sweater and then doing a new color work uh, chart, which this one I like significantly better. It has much better contrast. Um, so let me just talk about the colors a little bit. I used that Koigu Grello kit that I got the a uh, little while back and that is this dark black color, this kind of very light gray, this kind of charcoal-y gray, and then the neon bright yellow was part of the kit. My favorite part of the swatch is I use a skein of long dog yarns in the dark dimension colorway, which is this gray with speckles of pink and yellow in there as well. And you can see here, when I did the ticking, you can see all the uh, variegated colors in that skein. It was super fun. Originally, I was just gonna use the Grello pack plus the natural for the body, but I think adding that uh, speckly variegated skein in there really makes a huge difference. I think the entire look of the swatch looks much more interesting and I'm gonna have a ton of fun knitting the sweater. Um, this is a top-down collar work sweater um, that you have to steek, so like cut your knitting and then add the button band. Um, so that should be super exciting. I've never steeked a full-size sweater. I, I steeked some pockets for practice and stuff, but not a full-size sweater. So I am excited slash nervous and yeah, I really, really love this swatch. So I'm excited to get this one started as well. So moving on to works in progress. So I picked up an older work in progress that I have, that has been in timeout. I got a little bit mad at it since I dropped a stitch and kind of messed up the increases or decreases on two color brioche in mohair and I got annoyed. I fixed it mostly, but then the whole project went into timeout because I was mad at it. But I picked it up and I have, added a few inches to it so here was where I was and here is where I am now so yeah this is the fly away twist by Vera Valamaki I think it's interpretations volume four and um, this is knit up with some hedgehog yarns in the teacup colorway which is this natural with the pink and brown speckles then a kind of hot pink color yeah I'll, I'll put it in the show notes I don't remember what the pink color was and then I'm pairing that hot pink with this mohair that I got from Twist um, Fiber Studios down in Manhattan Beach. But yeah, this one's chugging along. It's super pretty. I still love the halo effect of it all. And two color brioche just makes me kind of happy. I pretty much picked up this project again because I felt slightly guilty about buying that Surrey alpaca mohair like yarn. And not finishing this project so um, that one's been chugging along so my next project I cast it on another sweater I think almost a month ago now but it had to go into timeout for a little bit but this is the Sophie cardigan it's this amazingly gorgeous textured cardigan here's the back panel here and it has a super interesting uh, start it has you start out with the saddle shoulders and then you kind of pick up off of that to knit the fronts and the backs with some short rows and this is knit up with my Brooklyn Tweed Arbor which I purchased at Church Mouse Yarns about a year ago now anyway it this sweater is absolutely stunning so far I adore the way this thing looks it's kind of blowing out a little bit there but you can see the textured all these cables are no more than six stitches wide, so I've been doing cabling without a cable needle. 
and that kind of like um, I guess super twisty motion to get all the stitches knit and the way that they needed to be knit really hurt my wrist that on top of the kind of newer construction that I wasn't used to I was super tense about it with me being super tense and like kind of scrunched up I actually got pretty bad like elbow pain as well as a little bit of wrist pain so I actually had to stop knitting for a while which was when I was um, trying to work on different crafts and I kind of got bit by the quilting bug again. I should have been better and I knew better because I, I knew that my elbow was starting to hurt a little bit but I was so set on getting the pieces put together so that at least I had like one piece. I knit until my body was angry at me pretty much. So I shifted gears and started some quilting again. I had purchased this fabric earlier in the year with the intention of making a quilt for my man. He isn't like super like into handicrafts so I, I, I tried to pick a pretty modern looking uh, pattern. The quilt pattern that I use is called Chandelier and it's out of uh, Lala Boutique's uh, book called Charm School Quilts and it was a pretty straightforward piecing project. It wasn't too complicated. And the fabrics that I selected are from Moda's uh, Compositions collection, which is mostly in a gray. So here is a little snippet of the quilt. Um, the compositions part comes in. There's certain patches that have musical notes on them and staffing. And the trim that I selected and backing also is the music notes. But yeah, this is a just a twin size quilt. Um, it has a wool batting. This was my first quilt back since uh, quilting my very first quilt earlier this year, which was the yellow and white diamond shaped one. And it was, it was really good to get back to it. Piecing the top wasn't too bad. That went pretty, pretty well. And then my hiccup really was trying to decide how to quilt this because like I said he isn't like super into quilting in general so I didn't want to do anything too elaborate or intensive and um, I wanted to keep this quilt pretty soft and pliable so I ended up going with kind of a um, chandelier looking uh, teardroppy shape so it's a little bit hard to see since the um, the quilt has been washed, but it kind of is like a straight line with a circle, straight line, circle all the way down. And I did that probably every four inches or so. And then in between, I added just some wiggly lines. Um, so it was pretty quick to quilt. And I actually quilted this one on my small machine since I was just passing the quilt straight through, there was a little bit less fussing around. But even with just this little bit of side to side movement in that little bitty space, it actually also kind of hurt my shoulders because I was a little bit hunched up around it. He loves this quilt. I love this quilt. Lady loves the quilt too. So yeah, we have been snuggling under this one since it is a little bit cooler now here in LA. But yeah, that was my gray chandelier quilt. And you can check out my Instagram for more of a full size picture of the top. It's a very masculine looking quilt, I think. I don't know. The chandelier part probably makes it less so, but I just like the pattern and the piecing was simple. I was still knitting like here and there for just little bits, but as I mentioned, my, my elbow and arm still hurt. So I tried, uh, so I pieced together another quilt. This one I made a baby size quilt. It's only about 45 by 45. And this one was pieced together with my Moda Into the Woods jelly roll that I purchased back when back over the summer when I went back home to Texas for the first time. Um, and yeah, this was my first little baby quilt. I wanted to do something a little bit smaller, try something new, maybe have it as a gift. But yeah, this one is called the uh, Jelly Roll Stack by um, Fat Quarter Shop. And it is a free pattern. Yeah, so it was really, really quick to sew together the strips and then cut the entire 
um, strip into smaller blocks and piece them all together. Um, really fun. Yeah, and for the binding, I ended up using kind of the leftover strips that I didn't use for the, the block piecing. So I actually managed to use almost the entire jelly roll for the front. And for the back, I just use a plain um, snow colored Kona cotton for the backing. And maybe I was crazy, maybe I was just super brave, but the, the white really shows up the quilting and it made me kind of anxious. But uh, the quilting that I actually did on this one was a all over pattern. And it's a little bit hard to see now that it's been washed, but it is called the Meandering Flower, and it is a design by Angela Walters. You can actually find the tutorial for this free motion pattern on YouTube. So I'll go ahead and link that to you guys. You can kind of see it here, but it's a swirl. And then around the swirl, you have these little petals. And then it just kind of goes around, 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 and until you start a new flower and then put the swirls around the outside. Yeah, so it just makes a super, super pretty texture, all over texture. And for this quilt, I actually did a double wool batting. So it was just two layers of the wool batting and it created a much more um, poofy quilt. But yeah, so that was this one. I don't know which lucky person is gonna get this quilt yet. And then if two quilts wasn't enough, I started a third quilt like by this time i'm obviously obsessed with quilting this is another quilt from the charm school quilts book this one is called modern basic and it pretty much was sewing large squares together so the piecing of this top went really fast i hesitated a little bit on purchasing a new sewing machine I have been thinking of getting a new sewing machine for quite some time uh, since I did my first quilt actually. I had been using a Singer Simple sewing machine. It's a hundred dollar machine or so when I got it and it has a really small opening for the throat which is where I'm having to push the quilt through and um, I had been waffling for a long time because I wasn't sure that I needed a new machine for just quilting or if I was really into quilting enough to justify buying a new machine. After those two quilts in such a short time, on top of the first quilt that I did that I loved, I had decided it is time to buy a new machine. You're being crazy. Your old machine is like over 10 years old and not super great. So I Amazon primed a new sewing machine because Amazon Prime. <laughs> um, so here it is. I got the a Brother PQ 1500 SL machine and it's super cute and look how big the space is it's um it's probably about a I think eight and a half nine inch throat space so I can fit a queen or probably a king size quilt through there pretty easily the modern basic quilt that I did is a queen size quilt or I think it's a little bit shorter than a queen size but yeah, I am so happy with this one, you guys. I did a double wool batting like I did for the smaller baby quilt. And oh my goodness, this thing is huge, first of all. So here is a little peek at the quilt itself. Um, the charm squares, these big five inch squares, are part of the um, Moda Good Life collection by Bonnie and Camille of Thimble Blossoms and Cottonway, I believe their names are, on Instagram. So yeah, I picked up this fabric from a new sewing store in my area. It's called Sew Together Stitching Lounge, and it's right next to a yarn shop on top of things. So this is going to be a bad, bad situation if I go very often. But anyway, I picked up this collection, um, and it... I had to have three charm packs, which isn't too bad, plus some yardage for the backing. And the backing that I selected is also part of the collection. It's this super cute coral heart on an off-white color. And then for the binding, it's one of the other patterns within the collection as well. And here, and here you can see the charm squares of the binding color. But yeah, so for this 
this queen size quilt, I needed a new sewing machine in order to quilt it, right? So yeah, I'm super happy with my machine. Uh, there was a little bit of a getting to know you period with this quilt, but I'm not going to point out where the issues were on this thing because I've been trying really hard to not instantly point to a negative when someone comments or compliments my work. So the quilting on this, I had decided to go with kind of a theme. I kind of like theme quilting on my quilts. For that gray one, it was kind of like chandelier beads on a chandelier quilt. And for the baby one, the fabric pattern was kind of floral-esque. So I did the floral kind of quilting on that one. And for this one, this one's also a flowery pattern. Um, but for this one, I decided to do something a little bit more complex to kind of work up my free motioning skills. And what I ended up going with was for the white squares on this quilt, I did a little bit of a rose-like motif. Let's see this one, you can see a little bit better. It's not super easy to see now that I've washed the quilt itself, but um, I kind of did a point to point square and then went back and kind of did a little triangle within that square. And um, all of these ideas I got out of Angela Walters' dot to dot uh, free motion quilting, or sorry, the shape by shape free motion quilting. But yeah, so I got inspired to do the outer square in that kind of spirally motion. And then for the center of the rows, I actually did kind of like another little spirally square within that to kind of get the center of the flower. And um, yeah, I thought it was pretty creative to put the two different um, point to point quilting variations together to kind of get this kind of rose-ish shape. And then on the edges of those flowers, I kind of put in like a little leafy bud part of the flower as well um, to kind of get, you know, very floral rose bush themed quilting pattern. And then around all of that, I kind of did more of a meandering leaf kind of shape. And this is another one of Angela's um, meandering type uh, patterns as well. The overall free motion quilting, I think, kind of looks like a rose bush with like some roses kind of popping up everywhere and then the leaves in between. And I'm really happy with this one. I think I was, I don't know, I felt really clever when I, I thought up the quilting design and layout and everything. And I'm super happy with this quilt. Unsurprisingly, my favorite part is the quilting process. I, I'm in, kind of indifferent to the piecing of the top. But then I actually also really like hand sewing my binding on as well. It's just kind of like a little bit of time after you're, you know, you're coming to the end of your quilt being finished and you kind of just get to sit with your quilt and kind of look at it a little bit closer as you're hand stitching. I'm, I really like the way a hand stitch binding looks because um, it looks the same on both sides and there's no exposed stitching. I use a ladder stitch for the binding instead of a blind hem stitch, I think it's called, because I think it, it shows up less. So that's all of my quilts for this episode. I made three because I'm a crazy person. I've been really enjoying it. I have a brand new machine, which I'm really excited about, and I have two finished sweaters. <laughs> the one perk of recording less frequently, I had a ton to show you guys. Oops, I almost forgot to announce the winner of the giveaway. Uh, I did a random number generator of all of the comments on episode 42. And uh, the winner of this lovely skein is Crafty Stockinette. Um, so if you could please message me either here on YouTube or over on Ravelry or Instagram, uh, I will try to get this skein out to you shortly. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming back and watching even though I've been recording less frequently. I'm gonna try to be a little bit better about that. But yeah, 
I hope you guys are having a wonderful fall where you are. I know it snowed up in the Pacific Northwest this weekend. It's finally cooled down here in LA and I'm enjoying the cooler weather. It's making me want to make all the cozy things. But that's it for me this week and hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!